What is up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we are coming at you each and every week with a fresh service to debrief in an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm Alicia Battaglia in the host seat today, and joining us is Abby Lineberg, and you are Administrative Assistant in communication and in the student ministry, right? Yes, yes both correct. ministries. Yeah. Hey, it's good to see you. Yeah, thanks thanks for, for being me. here. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, over here we have over here over here who is not in the host seat today, but in the in the preacher's seat we have our one and only Caleb Pearson, our student ministry director and Sunday sermon bringer. Alicia, this warms my heart to, to, to hear you host. I love it. I love hearing you do the little uh, opening crawl. It is uh, my favorite part of this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a great day. It's been uh, beautiful weather. Another another just lovely day. Uh, the weekend was wonderful. So let's just dive right in. Sure, uh, Abby. Yeah. So we we well first of all let's let's. Back Abby, judge, judge your boss. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's uh, recap here. That we, we're in Acts mm -hmm. uh, chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 42. And um, once again, we're moving through this, this history of redemption. And our text this weekend introduces us to the early church. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to think about in a, about a 30-year time period, this Jewish sect people are going to disperse and expand and be a worldwide church. Hmm. That just blows my mind. But so, Abby, in regards to the early church here, what what is your recap of Caleb's sermon and of the passage? Yeah. Um, so the fellowship of the king. I mean, you really hit on all of the all the ways that we fellowship or could fellowship and then those examples in the Bible, um, I really appreciated the emphasis on your personal history with fellowship as well. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. to use those kind of examples, it's like I'm not I'm not, you know, sixty seven years old. I don't have thirty <laughs> years of farm experience and then a whole bunch of different other I have to just, you know, use what I have so far. But yeah, it, it was works. fun to it was fun to tie it in. Yeah. 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 So, so tell us about. So you've you've preached before, which mm -hmm. we all love and look forward to. So for this particular passage, what kinds of things were you doing to prepare and uh, present? Yeah. So Acts two at FBC, we're very much kind of waving our wand over this whole chapter back and forth a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Mark unpacks the the sermon, which is just very meaty, a lot going on and he did it in one week and then we paused on verse 38 right. this whole idea of repent and be baptized that we're coming back to that next week okay and so this is very much a a, a pause between the two i i called it a, a a time lapse or a musical montage in the movie where you do get to see how people are reacting to what is being taught mm -hmm. and so in prepping for this and i, I you know have plenty of time to think about it cuz i'm not preaching weekly or anything at this point but um this is not a, a hard passage uh to to read it's not really hard to to comprehend it, you can take it at face value and so the question then is okay how can how can these elements you know mean more to us now and and how can we not just read through acts and be like okay here's kind of a break in the the good stuff the teaching and you kind of want to gloss over Oh, that's how they responded at the time. But but what does it mean for me? Well, based on how they responded, then we can we can I think more effectively answer that question. And so, in preparing for that, I wanted to understand the God focus and the others focus, and use what comes out of Acts two to to uh, describe participation fueled by anticipation, which is something I, I wanted to come across in the, in the sense that that's what they wanted to come across. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Acts 2, uh, Mark mentioned this uh, two weeks ago, but 
uh, verses 17 and 18 talk about uh, the book Joel and a fulfillment of a prophecy. Here's what it says in Acts 2, 17 and 18. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit. So that is what is happening here. Mm-hmm. But the rest of Joel, this prophecy, says things like, this is starting in Acts 2, 19, And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. And there's no biblical indication that that happened during this time. Continues to say, the sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, and that says, before the day of the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. And so in their mind, they don't know when that element of the prophecy is going to be fulfilled. But put yourself in their shoes. They're obviously like, well, that's next. Yeah. And, and so there's a there's an anticipation of that, and so it's not just a um, I want to participate in the church, yes, because God is so good, and we're just wonderfully anticipating heaven, which is true and righteous and good. But there is an anticipation of there's an urgency for what's going to be happening down here, and and what that prophecy means. And so you you look at the early church and the way they respond to Peter's words. There's such an awareness of what God has done and what he's yet to do. Yeah. The, so this is an effect of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, their mm-hmm. response, and um, we we get to see um, really a model of sure. what church life is looked like for them and um, as a result of that, but then also um, what we can glean from that. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, one thing that our small group was talking about last night and, um, and just with their um, their generosity and how they sold their possessions and met the needs of the people. And um, we were asking the question like, well, <clears throat> I wonder what they were thinking. Like, mm-hmm. is Jesus going to be coming back in a week? <laughs> if we had that perspective, like, would we be selling everything and, you know, having sure. more liberty and generosity in our giving or, you know, um, whatever the scenarios are. Yeah. But, but here, here is, here is their response. Um, and there is much we can glean from what's happening with how they're devoting themselves to the teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Yeah. And the, the original Greek separates the, the two of the, the breaking of bread and prayer being one element, and then the teaching and fellowship being being another element. And so it really is just describing the, the whole idea of love God and love others. Mm-hmm. And so it, it weaves into everything else the Bible is doing. One thing I, I, I would have liked to elaborate on if I had time, and I do want to speak towards the service as a whole here in a second too, is, okay, well, what, what, were, the, what were the apostles actually teaching? It says they, right. they listen and focus to the apostles' teaching. And so you, you learned there was teaching, there was fellowship, there was bread and prayer. We didn't have time, or at least I didn't take time to unpack what all of those four elements look like. Mm-hmm. The, the text itself gives us a clear image of what the fellowship looked like. Mm-hmm. It was the collaboration, the needs, you know, all those different things. So the question then is, okay, well, what is the teaching? And so you, you think, okay, well, what's the, the grand context here? We have Matthew 28 and the Great Commission that says, teach them to observe or obey or really follow all that I have commanded Mm -hmm. you. So it comes down to Jesus's words and what he has asked people to do. And then you understand, okay, well, who were the apostles? Many of these guys wrote New Testament books. Mm -hmm. And so we can say, I wonder what their teaching was. Well, A, it's Acts 2, Peter's sermon. There's going to be a lot of follow-up to something that big and massive. Sure. But what they're teaching is the gospel. Mm-hmm. What they're teaching is Jesus and him crucified. And we we have the book of James. We have the book of John, the book of Matthew. So it's cool to think the apostles spend a ton of time explaining to us in detail what they were teaching because we are using the exact same teaching. Mm-hmm. It's it's their signs and their wonders that we still cling to. It's their teaching that we still cling to. That's why I'm not an apostle teaching. They were the apostles teaching, and this is it. And this is a brand new church. I mean, this is a baby church. Like the this isn't like us where we've had the scriptures and and that this is new baby believers. And Mm -hmm. so for these uh, apostles and what they were teaching them and the they had walked with Jesus for three years and what they had seen and what Jesus had taught them. They're surely passing that on as well as, mm-hmm. as well as bringing up um, the Old Testament 
uh, scriptures and digging into those. Abby, I want to come your way. What um, out of these four points that Caleb brought about, what in particular stood out to you about Um, the early church? Yeah, I think the contagiousness of it, (laughs) Mm. Um, just like the excitement that everyone is flocking to, you know, of this, like you were saying, the new church, a baby church, like there's just so much excitement in that that's spurring in their hearts, I don't know, to learn Mm -hmm. and to even about something they're not sure about. Mm -hmm. Like what, it's always interesting. It's like, what made you interested? What made Mm. you jump into that? Why do you care? Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, it just really, it blossoms from there. I think Mm -hmm. that's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Caleb, so in your in your preparation, so you only had your your mm-hmm. forty minutes. Mm-hmm. You had four strong points and some application at the end. But what what got left on the cutting room floor? Yeah, I I, I could have elaborated more, and that's why now that I know this podcast is here, you know, you save stuff for this. But <laughs> yes, there's merit to elaborating on the the unity that that is the reason for all of this. There, there, there's the one mindedness that I, I mentioned, but. Understanding the the heart of unity that made the church, that's something that's continually sprinkled throughout the New Testament. I wanted to read a a few uh, verses out of Ephesians 4. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Now, that that command, that verse, we have a, a living, breathing example of what that might look like from an application perspective in Acts, the description of how they, you know, responded at the time. And so Abby mentioned the the contagiousness of it, like the Lord was adding to them. So they weren't adding to themselves based on their wonderful merit. Like they weren't, Mm -hmm. they weren't giving away things so perfectly that it 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 tricked people into the church. Like, no, the spirit was moving and and it the body of Christ became so clear that the Lord was able to add to his church really when we get out of the way. Yeah. And it's crazy to think the Abby alluded to this, the the perception was gladness and sincerity mm-hmm. of heart. The perception was not the the Jesus freaks, the 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 religious. Uh the perception to enter the church was not merely, okay, now I'm at rock bottom, let me try the God thing. But there was something about the gladness and sincerity mm-hmm. of heart of people who belong to the church that was just natural. Mm-hmm. Like th- there was a more natural, easy you know, way to do it. And th- that's what the whole passage is about, the fellowship of believers. And that's the first time we really get to see it embodied because now the Spirit's finally doing what it's doing. Well, and if you think about doing. like what, what happened... <clears throat> just a few verses before with the outpouring of the Holy Holy Spirit and the tongues of fire. Mm -hmm. So that was an undoing of what happened at Babel, where God confused their language and spread them out. Mm -hmm. Well, here, the the tongues of fire came to bring clarity, to bring understanding, Mm -hmm. to bring proclamation for the purpose of the witness of who the ascended Jesus is, Mm -hmm. the Lordship of Jesus. And so... um, that um, coming off the heels of that event is 100% unifying to think that this is something that they just experienced. And so that contagiousness then is just an outflowing, um, you know, overflow, which is totally unifying for them. Yeah, which is also why it's important to put Acts in in the context of the grand narrative as well. Obviously, I mean, a book like Joel is brought into the sermon, right. so it's, it's very easy to bridge to the Old Testament. But then you start to think about, okay, well, what's the bridge from me reading Acts to me and, and to the New Testament, which we belong to and we're a part of this church age? And you start to see these guys go on to write these books, and it all does, in fact, tie in together. And so you Yes, it's a descriptive passage, but yes, it's also the model that we follow because mm-hmm. it is proven time and time again. I, I used a handful of scripture, but there are, I mean, pick and choose. There are so many different elements of scripture that speak towards those I, those ideas. Therefore, encourage one another, admonish one another. Those are commands that, that have no expiration date at this point because of where we're at in the church age. And so we can look at what they did, and, and you mentioned it at the beginning of the podcast, but it's it's a picture of the church going so well, and it can kind of be a bit daunting 
Like mm-hmm. even in studying it, you're kind of like, Eesh, we ain't nowhere near this. <laughs> like me and my heart, I ain't not anywhere yeah. near this, you know, but yeah. but it's the spirit through them and it's it's an awareness and unity of one mindedness. And then you're you're leaning on one another as you do it. You know what I mean? Right. You you didn't stand out when you were collaborative. Right. You stood out if you weren't. Right. And just to even think about that is so crazy. But it's a it's a hodgepodge of people that are so ready in anticipation. It, we talked about a little bit of this at our soil group last night. Um, we talked about how um, this this picture here kind of looks like a, a church utopia, where sure. it's like everything is perfect and yeah. great mm-hmm. and all of that. But the, this isn't the end of the story right mm-hmm. here, because what's going to happen is they are going to be dispersed because that's what Acts 1-8 is about. They're going to be Mm -hmm. through persecution. They're going to go to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And, um, and so they, they are going to separate, but the character, the attributes of what this church looks like, Mm -hmm. that's not going to change. And it's not, um, for us, we are, we were made to model what this looks like. Yeah, and and I had thought about possibly, uh, you know, as I pray through and prepare, could I go ahead and ax a couple chapters to kind of go ahead and say like, here's what's going to end up happening to these yeah. people. <laughs> right. it, it, there's just right. so many right. things you can do, and and because we will get there, and it deserves time, you know, I, th- sure. there's a time for that. Yeah. But they are going to get spread, and it is wild and not always wonderful. Right. W- what is going to happen is, is absolutely crazy to these people, and it it doesn't stay all wonderful. Like right. it gets very tense, very discouraging at times. Rome brings the swift hammer down, but not in time to stop the spread, mm-hmm. which is why we've been implicated. It's why we're here now. Praise God, and so. You think through that and think, okay, well, the book of James, in response to the apostles' teaching, uh, apostle being somebody who who saw the risen Christ and was with him for that period of time, Stephen ends up getting stoned in Acts, and there's a dispersion of the tribes Mm -hmm. at at the time of James' writing, and then he writes the teaching. And so you just start to see how the triumph of the gospel is spreading because of Jesus and because of the content, because of that teaching, and it's it's such groundbreaking teaching that... I mean, we we can have those moments of of the goosebumps or the emotions or a neighbor accepting Christ and hearing the gospel has there's so much power to it because of the content. So to think that was the first time it was neatly wrapped in a package in the Holy Spirit era, mm-hmm. no wonder they responded that way. Right, mm-hmm. right. We were waiting for that for so long. So Abby, you you work with the youth, mm-hmm. uh, which is. Uh, I think you're a hero. Both of you are <laughs> heroes. Yes. Uh, the, so this this age that we're in right now, there are um, there are so many distractions, so many things mm-hmm. that pull us away from these essentials of what the early church, um, how they operated, and what that looked like. What um, what do you think are some of the distractions? Um, not only for our youth, but for even us as adults um, that are pulling us away from th- this devotion that they had. Yeah. Um, I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, but probably like the mainstream media, the news, like all those kinds of things that are worrisome, I think, can really distract people from a hope that they have in God mm-hmm. if they're too worried about financial stuff or <laughs> what's happening in the news or the politics. I mean, I, I think that's what's distracting a lot, but I really appreciate it from Caleb, and he does say this in youth all the time, um, that we are living in Bible times. And so it's just, I don't it's encouraging to think about like this, yes, this happened a really long time ago, but that doesn't mean that God's not still working and still in our lives every day. And we, t- we can find that devotion, like you're saying, yeah. um, just with, yeah. with prayer. It's, yeah. it's the same God. But but when we read the way he worked then, I've had students say, I, I really wish I, I lived when, when Jesus walked the earth. That's a natural thing to want to be. Yeah. That'd be so cool. Yeah. But you're in the spirit era. This is awesome too. Yeah. Oh, you could read that and be like, man, that would have been so cool if it was wind and fire and everybody's speaking all these languages. That would have been so cool. Yeah, it would have been. That was for them. But here we are now and we have the word of God and each other. Mm-hmm. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. Right. There are so many 
positive consequences of somebody else receiving the gospel that even their teaching at that time spoke into. You, you, you look at what the book of Romans does in Romans 1, 5 especially, that starts to lay the framework for salvation working itself out. Where do we go from here? There's an element of that. And especially after Romans chapter 5, you start to learn why sanctification and becoming like Christ is such a pivotal issue for Paul and some of these apostles, because we have that gift, that grace now. And now we have to figure out that grace. Mm -hmm. Do do we continue on in sin so that grace may abound? Well, no, by no no means. means. (laughs) Right. And so we have to... We have to rectify all that and, and discover what this new life, this new identity is. And I think that is the distraction, whether it's technology or media or the lies you believe, it's, it's going to attack your identity. That's so easy to see in the youth. But for adults as well, there are so many unbiblical remedies. Right. And if you find one and cling to it more than you cling to the Word of God, or worse, you don't know the Word of God well enough to realize what you're going through is biblical, mm-hmm. it's just going to get that much harder. Yep. And so when I counsel, whether it's a young adult or a student, I, I tell them one of the first lies you're going to be fed by the enemy is that what you are going through is not biblical, mm-hmm. that the word of God doesn't account for it. Why? How could it? Why would it? And for a 14-year-old, their reason is, well, there weren't iPods back then. <laughs> but for an adult, the reason is, well, I just haven't seen God move in the last decade. Mm-hmm. Whatever that might be, mm-hmm. there is, is so much o- awareness from the word of God and examples of people yeah. Doing things well, Acts 2, 42 through 47, and then doing things poorly all throughout Scripture. And to think we fit into that, there, there's an encouragement to that. There's oh, a little 100%. bit of a sense of, of peace. The peace comes from already being positioned in Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You prayed at the end of your the 9 o'clock service, which uh, was the one that we heard down in F3. You um, prayed that we would raise the value of biblical dependency. And that, like cling like clutched my heart because I thought yes because that's that's what they were doing they were mm-hmm. um they were digging into the scriptures they were sitting under the apostles teaching they mm-hmm. were hungry uh to learn truth and um they <laughs> They could have looked for a substitute or maybe sure. continued to seek out more experience or whatever, but they they clearly hear doctrine, the, mm-hmm. the truth of the scriptures was valuable to them. And so I think that for us, um, it is so important um, to hedge ourselves with the word of God yeah. to keep um, the enemy from, you know, breaking down those barriers, the mm-hmm. the, the strength of the word of God mm-hmm. in our lives. Acts is, is, a, is a primer for so much of the New Testament. And you you start to read more and then you see, huh, why does, why does God devote holy text later on to a lot of different churches, warnings about false teachers, mm. because it's cropping up already. Yeah. The, the early church starts to fall victim again to just different teaching. People are right. just kind of coming up with it. They're slipping back into law, the whole church of Galatia. There's all these ways to discount and, and demean and diminish what the finished work of Christ actually mm-hmm. means. Mm-hmm. And that is a that is an endless cycle. We are still wrestling with that. To People think teaching youth is just teaching the Word of God. It, it, it's also unteaching what's been taught by the world, by right. society. There's all these different things, and that leads to a misconception of of the church. Yeah. And so before you know it, we're groomed to decide what the church looks like based on what the world tells us it is instead of the other way around. But that's what matters is the Bible accounts for the world. In, right. in totality, it does. The mm-hmm. world discounts the Bible. It right. does not account for it. Right. Like that would be something that is a strength to to the world's way of thinking if it if it even came up for an answer for the Bible other than the fact that that's fake, it's not real. They discount it. But this thing in detail describes the world from beginning to end and what we're going to come up against. And for me to to go through the internship, to learn under these guys and continue to do so, th- I'm not having these spiritual experiences in my life where the Lord's revealing words to me in any way other than, I didn't know that was in here. Right. And I'm learning a new passage. And he he continues to just unveil and Mm -hmm. reveal and illuminate. The the word of God that is here, which is why- For a lifelong study. Which is why we teach expositionally here, which is why this is what we're going to cling to. This is what we're going to break down. You know, this is what we want 
you know, to understand uh, right. more than more than the teacher, the professor, the the whatever. We are not here for a Christian TED talk. We're yeah. here to listen to what God has said. Right. Right. And to see to see who God is. Mm -hmm. And then also there's that aspect of not only are we seeing who God is, but the related relationships with one mm -hmm. another in the fellowship. And mm -hmm. that um, has huge value as well. And um, someone in our small group last night um, had mentioned that uh, there is an importance of not only knowing, but being known. And, sure. And We're that designed for both. In, that happens in biblical community mm -hmm. um, where we can encourage one another. And Abby, I'm sure that in your circles, especially um, with your the young adults ministry, mm -hmm. that you guys experience true biblical fellowship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's really beautiful to see all the people, especially in Keystone. Um, I feel like we have a lot of people that come to Keystone looking for community. Mm -hmm. And so it's really turned into a place for that. And I mean, obviously, it's it's more than that, too. We have good sound teaching and all those things as well. Um, but yeah, the, the community and the fellowship that's there is it's one of a kind, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. It's it's biblical. It's encouraged. I, I mentioned Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. That that implies because of the Spirit, because we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. By the time Hebrews 10 is written, and by the way, we don't even know the author of that book. So the question is, why do we validate it? Because it's in alignment with the apostles' teaching. Right. I mean, if we came across ancient yeah. scrolls and a bunch of them happened to be signed by the author and one of them didn't, we we still take it and read them and understand, okay, all of this is part of what God is going to use for the, you know, the canonicity of Scripture, and it, it applies to today. And I remember going through that ecclesiology class, the, the study of the church, which is another just example of... Yes, we have a thriving young adult ministry, but we also have a senior pastor who asks me, name 10 to take through a class to learn what the local church is and isn't. That That is so healthy yes. and important. Yes, yes. Other, yes. We don't want some sort of young adult thing to spin off and have a logo and a brand and some sort of festivity. Mm -hmm. Like there's a both and component to, mm -hmm. to, to fellowship mm -hmm. and to teaching. Mm -hmm. And so to come across a verse that says, don't neglect to meet together as is the habit of some of you. Right. Like I remember reading that for the first time as an adult and just thinking like, wow, even that's in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Encouraging you to go to church. Right. Don't neglect what happens when you're together. And so I did want to mention, this was a, a shorter sermon than normal because of the service, but the service was so good. It was so good. Because there there was a lot going on, like and a lot of different communion. things. Including communion. If yeah. you weren't there, we participated in communion, which was such a beautiful package to it the was whole, just, the It was just the best. Everything. Like it, it was a it was a living, breathing representation of what what fellowship together and breaking of bread and prayer and all of those things can look like. And it's so encouraging and to the me. And on the global church oh, as yeah. well. Right. Yeah. And to think the service... I, I had less than half of the service time. I just thought that was incredible. I, I love to speak. I could babble forever. <laughs> but but to think and to and to embody to embody the fact that I'm gonna be a, a part of so many other elements of this service that mm -hmm. is gonna heighten, yeah, the teaching, which is why I didn't come up with my own. I went to the apostles' teaching, but then we also had the worship, the yeah. the encouraging and admonishing one another with songs and hymns and spiritual songs, the, the Colossians verse, right? To, to be a part of that this weekend was, was so cool and encouraging to see. So I, I, kudos to the worship team and to Mike and, and Rose and yeah. everything they did to make, you know, an international day of prayer plus communion plus acts like go together seamlessly. It, it was just cool. It was very cool. Yeah. So in, in considering this passage, what can we individually and corporately contribute Mm -hmm. participate and to these four aspects in verse 42 to devoting ourselves to the apostles teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers what can we do what can we contribute mm -hmm. yeah so no matter how you slice it into four categories of teaching fellowship bread or prayer or two categories the god focus and the others focus fellowship matters so so find fellowship not out of of um, legalism or obligation but out of opportunity and mm -hmm. love to, to participate in the body. Look at your week 
and ask yourself, this is just practical application. Look at your week and ask yourself, are there trends in my mood and my, in my outlook and my struggles? And how could a possible remedy of that be the Holy Spirit's activity through the life of another individual? And, and the reason I say that is because I have, in my past, I can look back and say, I was only wanting to find encouragement in my own story. Like I, I remember having some lone wolf tendencies and just waiting for my own encouragement, but the encouragement I needed was in the person sitting next to me on a Sunday morning yeah. to hear what God's teaching them or, or how God's moving through them. And when we gather together, the, the, the spirit is alive and moving and it's just an incredible thing to be a part of. So, you know, ask yourself, okay, is that happening? Yeah. You were, you said um, multiple times that there's nothing like a true story, that we're in this narrative and there's nothing mm -hmm. like a true story. And um, in God's sovereign, providential good plan, he's put us in the story. And so we do have a role to play. And if we have put our faith in Jesus, we have that same Holy Spirit that they had in mm -hmm. the early church. And so we are as much equipped to do love and did good deeds as mm -hmm. they were. Mm, that's good. So, yeah. 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 Um, Abby, you have anything else you want to throw in there? Uh, I just want to toss in, I'm always appreciative of your alliteration. I know that's like <laughs> oh, a yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's it helps with the... Participation fueled by anticipation mm -hmm. was uh -huh. a key theme in your sermon. And um, that is... When you think about anticipating something, especially something that you're excited about, mm -hmm. um, it it is it's it gets the fire. It's going. good. It's very good news for the people who belong to Jesus Christ, and it's very bad news for those who don't yet. Right. And so it's this both and. And you yeah. start to say, how are they so collaborative back then? Well, they they said, I don't need this. Jesus is coming back. Yeah, And yeah. it's hard to embrace that mentality, right. but man, we can prayerfully do that and at least keep that heart posture and perspective moving forward for sure. Yeah. But. So, okay, Mark Francis is not here to give us announcements, but you are. Yeah, yeah. Let me <laughs> so. let me pull up the website. This is going to be too late, but there is a get to know FPC event tonight happening. I'll be at that, uh, which is super exciting. Uh, Seven o'clock. Okay. So I, I'll try to get this podcast out by four. So yeah, if you happen to hear it and... Uh, I'm trying to think how many people <laughs> listen to this podcast that don't know about FBC yet, but hey, <laughs> spread the word. Uh, you can come to that. Uh, the Christmas at Fellowship graphic and info is up here. Uh, I don't know the full details of that, but there's hanging of the greens. Oh yeah, oh, she's in communications. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you what are, are we doing, Alicia? What are we doing? Yes. Yeah. There's uh, hanging of the greens. That's towards the end of the month, November 28th. There we that's go. That's the perfect opportunity to come and help set up the church for the Christmas season. Um, then there's always Follow the Star. You can sign up to bake cookies or look for other opportunities to serve in Follow the Star. Um, other than that, and get to know, I think that's kind of it right now. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, Abby, so much yeah. for being here and being a part of the conversation. And yeah. thank you, Kayla. Man, you're, you're my favorite host, it. Alicia. You're my favorite host. <laughs> Well, the fact of the matter, guys, is that sermons are not meant to take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love and God bless. <laughs>